can go back to the beginning can control what tomorrow will bring but I know here in the middle is a place where you promise to be you come when you meet me here again cause all I want is all you are when you meet me here again As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above everything. Like the sun shaping the shadow in my weakness, your glory appears. you come will you meet me here again cause all I want is all you
Just begin to say, I need more of you, Jesus. So I want more of you, Lord. Just say, I want more of you, more of you in my life, Jesus. Wherever you are joining us from, wherever you are worshiping from, just say, I need more of you, Jesus. Oh, we want more of you. More of you, Jesus. I need more of you, Jesus. 
not enough unless you come up will you meet me here again cause all I want is all you are will you meet me here again not for a minute come on Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Sing not, not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Come, Holy Spirit, drive on. I forsaken for the Lord is in this place and I just need more of him more of him thank you Lord because you are here this morning thank you because you are here touching changing transforming lives meeting every need we need more of you indeed Lord we worship you now as we begin Lord take over in the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you need more of you, Jesus? If you need more of you, Jesus, just type in the comment section there and say, I need more of you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to go to the announcements and then we'll take it on from there. Hallelujah. Hi there, this is Lungo with Jerry and here are the announcements. Every Wednesday we have Shoot Your Faith Up for just 15 minutes. Spare some time, log into our Facebook page and just listen to the Word of God. Every Thursday from 19 hours to about 19.45 we have Roy Connect. This is where we just meet and just interact, share the Word of God and get connected. Remember we are family and this time we are doing it via Zoom. Every Sunday we meet from 9 hours to about 11.30 at Gideon Roberts University. But because of the current situation with the COVID, we are doing it online. Be available, get ready, and listen to the Word of God just for 45 minutes. Youths Get Ready at Youth and Young Adults Conference. This year we are having it again. The dates will soon be sent on our Facebook page. Remember, we are still having Worship Unlimited, Rock of Escape Worship Unlimited this year. Our annual event, Rock of Escape Worship Unlimited. The dates will soon be sent out. Get ready, get prepared, let's worship the King of Kings. Remember, Rock of Escape Vision is a global church that brings glory and honor to the name of Jesus, revealing his power to save from sin, heal and forgive, as well as empowering people to lead and influence in all areas of life. 
our mission for the church is to cut across nations with a Christ-centered gospel that will bring about transformation, thriving families, and a desire to worship God in spirit and in truth. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much to my lovely wife for those announcements. Hallelujah. Just, uh, uh, oh, you can't greet your neighbor. Amen. Just type in the chat there and tell them, welcome to church. Amen. I'm so used when we are meeting physically, you say, I, I, you know, I tell you, greet your neighbor. Find out what food they ate. Was it nice? Who cooked it? Did they put salt or sugar? I know we can do it now because we are not meeting physically. Amen. But I'm here to give you an announcement, and this is it. We are resuming our physical services from next Sunday, the 15th of August. How many of you are excited? If you're excited, just show ex your excitement in the comment section. You guys are not excited. You're not excited. We can't wait. Eh? We can't wait to have you. We can't wait to have you and just have fellowship with you physically. God richly bless you. Another important announcement is obviously the Rock of Escape Youth and Young Adults Conference is on. And the date is set September 4th. We have Dr. Chibamba Kanyama, Mr. Chibamba Kanyama. I don't know why I like calling him doctor, maybe because he has accomplished so much. He's one of the speakers there. We have uh, Minister Paul Simujaya Ngombe, amen, the campus director for Emma Zambia as well, who will be ministering. Stevie G will be ministering in music. And then we have Rock of Escape as well, ministering in music. So if you can, please make sure that you make your way there. Now, remember, there are many people that are already registering. You need to register because only those that are in the database will be having seats in there so make sure that you go to the rock of escape page make sure that you go on my page or wherever you will find it register yourself for the rock of escape youth and young adults conference god richly bless you shall we just pray father we thank you for today thank you for this morning it's a lovely sunday lord mm, 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 mm. indeed we need more of you jesus we need more of you jesus we are not enough unless you come will you meet us here again as the service is going to go on today, Lord, I pray that you shall touch and bless somebody's life. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now, today we are looking at the subject, she's not Miss Independent. She's not Miss Independent. Amen. It sounds more um, like a message that is centered towards uh, the women folk, especially the young ladies. But I can tell you that it is scattering all areas. It is scattering all areas. The Lord was ministering to me. The past few weeks, um, after um, my heart got troubled, seeing how um, our friends, especially the women folk, have, um, you know, need some form of, of guidance. You know, I saw things like Kalamatila. I saw things like, you know, there are all these things that are, are out there. And um, the Lord just, just poured out this word that I thought I should be able to share. But it's scattering across. So just write in the comment section there and say she is not Miss Independent. You know, today many women um, pride themselves in, in calling themselves Miss Independent. If a woman is to be successful, she will refer herself as a Miss Independent. And most of the times when this coin or this phrase is spoken, it is put in such a way that she sounds as this uh, self-centered uh, high achiever, a very arrogant woman, you know? Very arrogant woman. She says, I'm Miss Independent. I bought myself a house. I bought myself a car. I don't need anybody to talk to me. You can't even, I don't even care about men. And alas, there are many young women and many women alike that are aspiring that kind of life, that want to model themselves ab about and make themselves Miss Independent. When a woman is in a marriage and then maybe something happens, she begins to have this attitude and calls herself Miss Independent. But before I get in there, and trust me, I am not going to castigate anyone, but I'm just going to build you, young woman, you that's feeling worth worthless, even you that's a so-called Miss Independent in inverted commas, you're going to get a word that is going to shape you and make you live that beautiful life of yours worthwhile. So that you don't have regrets inside there and begin to portray a life outside that you're not really 
you not really are. You know, there are many that are showing smiles. There are many that are powdering, that are looking good. But there are all these things that are hurting inside of them. Amen. Now, men, if you are joining me, I have a word for you. And today I want to let you know exactly how God designed you and how God wants you to function as a man. I know many of you feel like there are certain, the, the, the burden is too much or you've got so much responsibility, you know, to, to take care of. And many of you, sometimes you think uh, you are not worthwhile because there, 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 there are things that you thought you could or you needed to do, but you just can't do them. But today I want to talk to you. Let's just go to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 15. I mean, chapter 2 and verse 15. Maybe we may go right up to 18 there. Genesis chapter 2. And then we can go uh, maybe up to from 15 to 18 there. Amen. God richly bless you. We, we are going to go to the scriptures. I, 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 I think I, I, I have a very, very wonderful story to tell you, and it's exciting. Um, I think it happened a few days ago. Something just happened. The Lord blessed me with a little bit of some money I, I, I had, and I carried it, and I was moving uh, with my wife. We're driving along Cairo Road. Amen. And when we got there, you know, I saw another young man, he was moving and he was carrying some stuff. So when I went to check, I discovered it was some Bibles. It was some Bibles. Hallelujah. So I, I looked at him and I said, look, I would love to buy a Bible. And he sold me a very wonderful Bible. Now, this is my new Bible. If you're in Rock of Escape Worship Center, you can just have a look at it. I have another new. So I've got two new Bibles this morning, I have two new Bibles. You know the other new Bible that I've always been showing you, and there is another new Bible. Just say congratulations, Pastor. Amen. So today I have the new Bible, and I'm going to read from it. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 and 20. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15 and 20. Amen. Pray for me. Last week, for some reason, I failed to find Galatians. <laughs> I have to find Genesis chapter 2. I have found it. Amen. And I'm reading from the Bible, Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15. The Bible says, The Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend it and to watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, You may freely eat of the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. It is your fruit to eat. If you eat this fruit, sorry, you are sure to die. We read it again. Then the Lord placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend it and watch over it. But the Lord warned him, you may eat freely of the fruit of the tree in the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Now verse 18, then the Lord said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make him a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from all the ground, all the wild animals, and all the birds of the sky. He brought them to man to see what he would call them, and the man chose a name for each one. He gave names to all livestock and all the birds of the sky and all the wild animals, but there was still no helper just right for him. So the Lord caused, I've gone to 21, so the Lord caused man to fall into a deep sleep while the man slept. The Lord God took out one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, this one is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from the man. Thank you, God, for the reading of your word. Let's thank God for the reading of his word from my new Bible. Amen and amen. Now, if you look at Genesis chapter 2, from the 15 to about 21 there, the Bible says God placed the man in the garden to watch it and to keep it. In other versions, it says to work it. Meaning, the first thing that God gave to a man before he assigned him every anything is work. God gave a man work. But it wasn't just work. He gave him a responsibility, and this responsibility is more of a steward or a custodian. 
I hope you understand. Man, God designed you by nature to be able to govern things, to be able to be a custodian of things, meaning you take care of things. If something is not in good state, if something is not operating accordingly, you make sure that you make it work properly so that the owner or somebody that has given you that responsibility to take care of it should find it perfectly fine. Remember, before man was created, God was creating stuff. He created the sun. He created the earth. He created everything that you see, the skies and the birds of the air. And he made a beautiful garden. But for that garden to look good, for that garden to have its aura, for that garden to be attractive, God placed a man in there. And he said, man, I need you to take care of it. So this scripture tells us that as men, by design, we need to have the, 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 what do you call it? The role of a manager. The role of a manager. That is to take care of things. Now, taking care of things in form as, as a manager means that there are different facets and you make sure that you organize them uh, so that they, they continue to work accordingly. They continue to shine. That is what a manager does. Obviously, you know I'm the director and CEO of Prime Tire Zambia Limited. I don't do the running around most of the times. Yes, I do it, but there are things that I do, but I also oversee after staff. I make sure that they are all taken care of, their salaries are paid, they, 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 you know, they, they have, they, all they need to have is in place, and that the business overall is operating accordingly because everybody is doing their part. That is what men are called to do. Something happened last night. I went, um, I think I had an engagement, and then um, I finished quite late, I think it was about 22. And then my young sister called me and told me um, she needed something. So um, the only place that was open was this particular lodge. So I had to get um, uh, the food that she needed from that restaurant. And when I went there, they told me you are going to wait for about 30 minutes or so. It took more than an hour. So past 23 hours, there were men in there drinking, you know, doing all sorts of things and making noise. A lot of music was playing there. You know, Amuna, sorry, I didn't want to mention, you know, there were there are different songs that were being played and they were all men dancing and, you know, shaking. And I looked at the time and I was like, this is 23 hours. Okay, I'm coming because I was preparing for Sunday and I had an engagement. Now I'm going home. What are these men doing here? I looked at some, they had rings. Drinking and playing. Some had women. I don't know whether they were wives, but when I looked at the edges and I looked at the way they were talking, I could tell that that was not a man. Now, some of them would come to me and tell me, no, you know, I've provided everything at home. My wife has got a car. My children's school fees are paid and all. Oh. Listen, men, that is being a disgrace. It is being disgraceful. You cannot go spend time in a bar drinking and playing around when you are supposed to be a good manager of your family. What example are you giving to your children? Today you've got children that do not have respect for elders. Even these young cadres, the people that are killing each other and doing this, it is because they don't have direction. Let me tell you, God's responsibility over you is beyond food and eating. Before God in Genesis chapter 2 told man to say you can eat of every tree, he gave him work and he told him, this garden, I need you to take care of it, to work it and to keep it. You have got work to make sure that your home is well managed. The children need to see you at home. They need to see you arrive at home in good time so that they can have an example of how to lead a home. Yes, you have given your wife a car. Yes, you have paid for your children's school fees. But that, that there is more to that. There is more to that. Time for playing is gone. I don't expect a married man to be spending time at 23 hours with young girls in a tavern, drinking and dancing and for what? Tell me, for what? For what? If you thought that just giving money to your wife and your family is what it means to become a man, 
and then you can waste your life anyway. Let me tell you something, sir. You have lost it. You are not man enough. Real men are managers. Real men take care of their homes. And taking care of your homes means instilling good morals, good values, principles, and things that people can look at and say, yes, that is Mr. Banda's home. Yes, that is Mr. Piri's home. What are some of the Bemba names? What are some of the Bemba names? Mr. Who? Yes, that is Mr. Mulenga's home. You know uh, some of the Tonga names. Yes, that is Mr. Hamangaba's home. You understand what I mean? <laughs> For some reason, you know, our friends have got an H at the, you know. That is Mr. Uh, uh, Hamududu's home. You understand what I mean? People should be able to know. But you find your child is all over. Your wife is all over. You know, she's a married woman, but the way she behaves, she behaves like she's not a married woman. You are a disgrace. Real men are managers. Real men know how to take care of their homes. Real men go home on time. Real men know when the child is not well and they are there to support, making sure that everything is on point. I hope you're getting what I'm trying to do. Eh? Now I see men today, they've even lost their dignity. You understand? Somebody says he has gone for work. Somebody says he's going to do something. And all you find him doing is dancing before someone. Bossy, 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 bossy. You know, what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, we are all bosses and we've got people that we call bosses. We don't go to them and we say, bossy, boss. Only a commander or a sergeant is supposed to be saluted. Eh? This day I'm on the road. <laughs> I'm on the road. This young man, in his, he's about uh, 20, 25 years old, maybe 30, 29 years old. I'm driving, and then he comes on my window, and he's asking for a coin. You know? And before I, 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 I give him the money, what does he do? Can I stand? I'm going to stand. Okay? What does he do? He stands on my window, and then he does this. What are you doing, sir? In the middle of the road, when you are supposed to be working, you are asking for coins and busy stamping feet. Men, 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 men. Do something. Do something. God has given you work. And for those of you, maybe I'm talking about those guys. There's those of you or, or those men that, you know, are making the big buck, that are making more money, that are making whatever it is, but they are not at home. They, they, they don't call their wives. They don't check on their children. And I was very proud. I called myself a proud dad on Thursday. It was on Thursday. And I, I was in my office. My daughter was on the other side. I'm working this side, and I'm also helping her do homework. You understand? I felt very proud. Because that is what men need to do. You are a manager. Let your children, let your wives know that you are there to manage their home. They are looking up to you. Before God made a woman, he made a man first and he gave him a job. And that was stewardship. Are we together, men? And all the men said, amen and amen. Now, if you look at the same scripture from Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says, after God gave man the work, from verse 18, he said, God looked and he saw that there was no suitable helper for a man. He said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a special helper. Now, one thing you need to be able to realize there is that when God mentioned that, he had no woman in mind. He had no woman in mind. Let me just read it again. Hallelujah. Um, did I tell you that, um, oh, I did tell you, huh? I got another new Bible. I got another new Bible. Let's just look at this scripture, okay? The Bible says, in verse 15, the Bible says, The Lord God placed man in the garden of Eden to tend it and watch over it. But the Lord God warned man, you may freely eat of the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Then verse 18, the Bible says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for a man to be alone. I will make him a helper who is right for her. I will make him a helper who is right for her. 
Now, look at nine, for him, I mean. Look at 19. The Bible says, So the, the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals and all the birds of the sky, and he brought them to man to see what he would call them. And man chose a name for each one. He gave names to all livestock and all the birds of the sky and all the wild animals, but there was still no right helper for him. What this simply means is that when God said, I will make man a suitable helper, he thought maybe if I bring the birds, they will be a suitable companion for him and help him. But when man looked, he said, no, I can't have this. They brought him the elephant. He looked at the elephant, probably saw the trunk, and he said, mm, I will sing a balance. I can't have the elephant. I'll just call it elephant. You know, they brought the lions. God brought everything. The Bible says there was still no suitable helper for man. What happened then? Then God saw something and said, mm -mm. man needs something more. Man needs something more. Man needs something more than this. He needs something that he can feel closely by himself, something that can give him a sense of belonging. I hope you understand what I mean. Hallelujah. Now, if you are a woman, say amen, pastor. Say amen, pastor. If you are a woman, okay, both men and women say amen, pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. God saw that man needed something more. And this is what he did. The first time he formed all these things and man was what? Watching. But this time he makes a man sleep. And then he say, the Bible says in verse 22, verse 21, So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took out one of man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and brought her to man. Then the man said, at last. Now you've seen that when God was bringing all those things, man was not pleased. But when he brought a woman, he said, at last. And he said, this one is born of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. She is not misindependent. She is not misindependent. That is the title for today's message. When woman was formed, he was formed of a man. He was formed because man needed to work some, with somebody else. He was formed because man could not exist alone. He needed a woman beside him. And the two could be able to do things properly together. Now look at the word that God puts. He said, I will make him a special helpmate. Listen to me. Somebody that cannot be able to assist you to do something is not qualified to call themselves a helper. You only need a helper to do that thing which you cannot do on your own. A helper gets you to do that thing which you cannot do on your own. This woman is not misindependent. This woman is a helpmate to man. So men don't look down on women. See them as helpmates. And women don't begin to think that because you've grown up, because you've got money and you're doing these things, then you call yourself misindependent and you think I don't need no man. I don't need anybody to talk in my life. You are not misindependent. You are a helpmate. Completing God's design. Completing God's design. When you understand this thing, it is going to save you in relationships. I've got very many young men and many young women that are complaining, you know, this man, this whatever, shan. and you look at her attitude, it is because she thinks relationships are all to be alone. Now, I had mentioned something. When God was forming man, was giving man those beds and whatever, maybe they could be companions. Man was uh, awake and he was looking around. I said, no, 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 no. But when his eyes were closed, when he opened his eyes, he found this woman and said, at last, I have found her. What is very significant here? There are women today that are busy looking for men. Women are looking for men. No, it is not you to look for a man. If you want to have a flourishing relationship, be found. Let the man find you. 
Women don't look for men. Women are to be found. Now, when a man finds, he doesn't look elsewhere. When you find a woman, you don't look elsewhere. The time when you are not married and you found one, it's like Adam. When God brought the beds, there were all sorts of things that he was looking at. Okay, elephant, okay, lion, all these things and whatever. But when he found the woman, he said, now this one is the one. And the scripture in 23 says, the two shall become one. Meaning, when you have found that as a man, there is no looking anymore. You don't look to the left. You don't look to the right. You only focus on that one woman that you find. And for you, woman, when man was sleeping, God was busy forming the woman, making sure that she's just right and perfect for the man. You are not in misindependent. Your duty is not for you to find. Your duty is to take care of yourself. Brush your teeth in the morning. Comb your, comb your hair, you know what I mean? to my paint, whichever way you do it, whatever, you know, your heart, mold yourself and look good so that he can find you. Don't go out in the streets and begin to look for man because you have seen him driving a Range Rover. You want to look for him. You are a disgrace. Work on yourself. Work on yourself. Begin to look good. Begin to dress well. Begin to talk like a woman, you know. Not three minutes, he comes to you. And he says, how are you? You say, I am fine. Before he can even say, can we go out? You say, yes, yes, yes. Where can we go? Uh -uh. That is not what we do, women. Yours is to be found. And when you are found, it becomes a bond of unity. Now let me talk to you women. I've spoken a lot about men. God has not designed you to begin to look for men with money only and you think that a man just needs to take care of me. The man is a manager, but the woman is a helpmate. She is not misindependent. I've seen women complaining and say, he doesn't even bring any food. He doesn't even do this. He doesn't even do it. Yes, that is true. A man needs to do that. There are women that are privileged and having a man provide and do all these things. But I will tell you something. There is a particular kind of woman who is very rare to find. There is a particular kind of woman who is different and she is very rare to find. The Bible says, very few men can find this kind of woman. Very few men can find this kind of woman. You might be wondering, who is this kind of woman? Who is this rare woman that this man, that men rarely find? Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 31, a scripture that you all know. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For some reason, my new Bible is very quick to flip. I've already found Proverbs chapter 31. Hallelujah. Let's try to read from verse 10. <laughs> Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her, and she will greatly enrich his life. This woman, her husband trusts her, and she can greatly enrich his wife. This woman can enrich the man's life. The Bible says, this woman, very few can find her. Let's go on reading, verse 2. She brings good to him, not harm, all the days of her life. Every day of her life, she brings good to him and not harm. She finds wool and flax and busily spins it. She is like a merchant ship bringing food from afar. Ha. She is not a man. Oh. This woman is not a man. Are you getting me? But what is she doing? She is bringing food from afar. And the Bible says this woman, very few men can find. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast before her household and plan the day's work for her servant's days. 
she is up early in the morning to make sure that everyone has food and her plans and plans the day for her servants girls meaning she begins to tell them what to do she goes to inspect a field and she buys it ah it's a woman sir it's a woman she goes and finds a field and she buys it the woman finds a field and she buys it <laughs> she is energetic and strong a hard worker she makes sure her dealings are profitable nobody goes into business and does something that is unprofitable this woman goes into a field and makes sure her dealings are profitable she is energetic and strong, a hard worker. Her hands are busy spinning thread. Her fingers are twisting fiber. She extends a helping hand to the poor and her hands arms to the needy, meaning she even has enough to help the poor. She even has enough to make sure that other people have got money. Verse 22, she watches over everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. Verse 29, there are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. She is not misindependent. She is called the virtuous wife. She is called the virtuous woman. Young lady, it doesn't mean that when you are married, you need to lazy around and wait for the man to bring food and provide. You can do well. You can get a degree. You can get a higher job and begin to do great and mighty things. Now, when that begins to happen, that does not make you misindependent. That does not make you arrogant. It makes you a rare woman, a woman that is not easy to find. This woman is called the virtuous wife. She is not called Miss Independent. And everybody say amen. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is looking for young women that will not go out and begin to waste their lives thinking that all they need is a man to provide for them. So they want to be attractive by letting their cleavage be seen by everyone. They wear scanty so that they can attract a man and get his money. That is being a prostitute. It is not being a woman. It is being a prostitute. Real women are virtuous like this one. Real women take care of their homes. Real women don't work independent of their husbands. I know that there are women who have lost their husbands and all, and maybe they choose to live a celibate life. That is obviously another story for another day. And we pray such great women. I know such great women that have stood on their own and have stood to be a pillar in life. But I'm talking about a young woman that is even thinking marriage is not necessary because all men are dogs. Who told you that all men are dogs? You are calling them dogs because you think only a man needs to provide. You sit down and he's just buying you makeup. He's buying you everything. Yes, that is the duty of a man. It is true that he can find such a woman and that marriage can look honorable if a man is doing his responsibility. But would you want to be that different and rare wife which few men can be able to find. These are the things that you do. So when you, are, when, when you are in marriage, think and look, check around and say, can I buy land? The virtuous wife buys land. When you buy land, don't call yourself independent and, 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 and begin to fret over your husband and begin to show off. No. Verse 31 said her husband prays her, praises her and the children bless her. You are a virtuous wife, not Miss Independent. She is not Miss Independent, but a virtuous wife. You do not need Kalamit, Kalamatila, like that young lady who is shameful, teaching you wrong things and saying, no, get it and begin to rub it on yourself and say, Mr. Piri, Mr. Piri, give me money, Mr. Piri. That is witchcraft, and we abash and rebuke witchcraft in Zambia. No young woman shall live their lives like that. There is a wig that every slave queen, every, you know, common girl can afford to buy by selling themselves off. There is a wig 
that every common and useless girl is able to buy. But let me tell you something. There is a wig that not any ordinary woman can be able to buy. That is a wig that is worn by a woman that has worked hard, studied hard in law, and she's putting it on, and they call her state counsel. Listen to me, young lady. You can be a lawyer and work hard and wear a wig that only the exemplary women can be able to wear. Don't worry when others are putting on expensive wigs and you don't know where they got them from. Be that virtuous woman. Work hard, and you can get yourself a wig that no commoner can be able to wear. There is a gown that no common woman can be able to wear. Others can get them from wherever they can get them. But there is that gown which a woman can be able to wear, which no common woman can be able to wear. And that is a gown that is put on by a doctor. That is a gown which is put on by a nurse. That is a gown which is put on by, 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 by a manager somewhere. Wouldn't you want to aspire for that? When you achieve that, you are not misindependent. You are a virtuous wife. God richly bless you. Let me pray for, for women. Let me pray for men. Father, I pray that you raise men and women in this generation that will know that you created them for a purpose. And each, one of, and each and every one of them has got defined responsibilities. They've got defined roles. Let them know that you created them, oh God, Heavenly Father, to replenish this earth. Be fruitful and multiply to make sure that your purpose on earth is fulfilled. There is no misindependent. There is no heavy giver, or what do you call these men? There is no sugar daddy. There is husband. There is wife. There is man. There is woman. And these are blessed by God. Bless the women of Zambia. Bless the girls of Zambia. Bless the boys of Zambia, Lord. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Amen and amen. You can only achieve this and become that perfect man and perfect woman if you have Jesus in your life. So today, I want you to just receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. I know that you rose again for my redemption. I believe in you, and I know that because of what you did on the cross, I am saved in Jesus' mighty name. If you did that, you are a child of God. This is Pastor Joshua Jerry from Rock of Escape Worship Center. Our mission is to cut across nations with a Christ-centered gospel that brings transformation, thriving families, and a desire to worship God in spirit and in truth. God richly bless you, and bye-bye. Hallelujah. The reason I like coming to church, I love coming to church, is that 